Hey guys, it's Parker here, back at part 18 of the Great Ace Story 2 Resolve. <clears throat> okay, uh, I guess I started the Cox examination for Dr. Size. It all began at the scene when I saw the waxwork in a note tucked in his jacket. Oh. Okay, okay, uh, now I remember. Alright, let's press, get some more information. Did you have any idea who, of who was behind it? There are a few, very few people in the know about what really happened 10 years ago to start with. But anyway, I never heard of this engineer, so no, I had no idea. Yet despite not knowing who was behind the plan, you went along with it? I had no choice. Pretending the professor's secret was my only concern. But the horse is bolted now, and the stable door will never shut again. Scarring your reputation will be immeasurably damaged as a result of all this. Yes, thank you, Lord Francis. I'm well aware of that. So, as I understand it, when he found the birdcage, the under the birdcage was the waxwork model. Where then was the victim's body? She will continue. Hold it! So you knew about the special construction of the stage used to carry out the trick then? It was quite obvious about what happened with the victim and the waxwork. And you switched the two over the issue, in other words, you recorded the victim's body as having been discovered in the crystal tower in the waxwork? I wrapped it and sent it by carriage to a specified address at the specified time. And why are you given such directions? Presumably, so it could be recovered by Jabra and returned to Madame to spells. I see, and then you put the birdcage back on the experimentation stage? Yes, although someone obviously made a mistake about which cage should go where. I thought I made it perfectly clear to the team, but still. I suppose you're focused on Victor's body, that being a more important detail. Hmm. Hold it! When you say arrange, I presume you mean with this? So you stabbed the body? Yes, the instructions in the engineer's notes says something along the lines of Fabricate some evidence to make it clear that Hairbrain alone could have killed Asman. So you mean that was your doing? I fetched Hairbrain's ridiculous screwdriver from the stage and took it with me, alone, to the abyss under the stage where the birdcage had fallen. Alone, doctor? I didn't feel it would be appropriate to involve anybody else in that particular part of the deception. There was a void under the stage where I found a bird cage lying in the dirt. I approached it, leaned down, and slowly opened it up. Then, I took the screwdriver in both hands and punched it to the man's chest. Oh my god. And then you noted that in your fake autopsy report. As a fictionist cause of death. But was he alive when he stopped or was he dead dead? Exactly. So, the actual cause of death was... The trauma resulting from the 30 foot drop. My word. What is it, Mrs. Otto? Something about Dr. Sykes' last statement. It's playing on my mind, that's all. Yes, mine too. It's kind of fishy. Dr. Sykes. There's really no need to shout. I can hear you perfectly well. The defense calls for you to add what you just uh, uh, said to your former testimony. Oh? Which part? What I want her to supplement her testimony with is... Okay, um, the way she stabbed, she said that she stabbed the victim is kind of fishy to me. I'll actually look at the court record again. Uh, I'll look at the... Okay. Then why is the wound still bleeding? I don't know. How you stab Mr. Ass in the chest? That part. Fine, that's the way you want, but there's really no need to point. Everyone points to this courtroom, though. The prosecution concurs. Very well, you'll supplement your testimony now, witness. 
If you wish, my lord. Okay, I just had to like adjust the mic a little bit. I stood over the victim's cor uh, corpse where I lay in the top cage and plunged the screwdriver to the chest. Okay, but if you stab the corpse while I was laying down, I don't think it would bleed downwards, right? Like it would, it would just bleed. Yeah, I don't think the blood would go downwards. The blood would go downwards if the corpse is like up, but it's like laying down. So I don't know. Okay, let's present this. The stab wound is too suspicious. I've got a nasty feeling that this inconsistency points to extremely uncomfortable truths. What on earth is the matter, Council? Have you lost your tongue? I apologize, my lord. Dr. Slice, in that state last name of yours, just one point. That seems to defy explanation. Out with it, my learned friend. There's an obvious inconsistency between your description and this photograph. The stab wound. It shows the victim in the birdcage following the events that led to this death. The court has already examined that photograph in depth. There's nothing new we can learn from it. Oh, I think I'm gonna increase the game audio for me. Not for you guys, because uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like a banger thing going on here. Yes, we have already considered it's true. But we now know the facts to be different. What do you mean? I believe we should let the defense explain. Where are this photograph? Will we see the leash inconsistency with the witness statement? The stab wound. The blood is going downwards. Look closely at the blood stain on the victim's chest. It clearly extends in a downwards direction towards the man's feet. And why is this stop significant, Council? Because the body was in a different kind of position. When the body was stabbed, that's why the blood went downwards. Exactly, my lord. Dr. Sykes made it very clear in testimony just now that the point at which she stole Professor Hairbrain's screwdriver stabbed the victim. The victim was laying down, but blood wouldn't go downwards if, if, it was, if, if the body was stabbed while it was laying down. When the shape of it, it scared that the birdcage would have fallen on its side after the 30 foot drop. And if the victim had really been stabbed, was inside the birdcage in that position. The blood from the wound would have been spread out equally in all directions. For it to have formed the longitude longitudinal um, appearance you see in the pictures, inconceivable. That. <clears throat> Given that the victim's blood seeped vertically downwards from the wound, it must be the case that when he sat Mr. Asman, he was standing up. In short, Dr. Size, your latest testimony is a total fabrication. Ah, God! I knew it, I was right. Now I've identified that contradiction, there's only one way to explain the facts. We've all been under great misapprehension here. What? What sort of misapprehension? Dr. Size. You claim your course into helping Mr. Jepper as a result of the note he left in the waxwork. You claim that you made changes to the scene of the crime to implicate the defendant, and you claim that you authored a fake autopsy report to cover your tracks. But one of these claims is an out and out lie, because the question of what the person really tells us has only one possible answer. You stabbed him while he was standing upward. Also, you've clearly struck upon a revelation. Now tell the court what it is. Which part of Dr. Sykes' story is shown to be a lie by the contradiction of testimony? Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> let's try the stabbing. She did lie that the stabbing was <laughs> was the body was laying out. Okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> it's been a while. Okay, it's been like a week since I played it. Played this. The answer is very simple. Consider the sequence of events. Okay, okay, let's, let's get going. 
If, when this victim was stabbed, the blood from the wound seeped downwards as it did, we can be sure that the victim must have been either sitting or standing upright at the time. But as he rightly pointed out, the barricade should have fallen on the side when it fell beneath the stage. Yes, it would, which tells us that the victim must have been in that position of his own accord. Objection. That's impossible. The man was dead, remember? Maybe he wasn't dead. No, that was a misapprehension. He wasn't dead. And then Dr. Sai stabbed him when he was alive. When the birdcage... When the birdcage fell from the stage to a void below, must have hit the ground with considerable force. So he's probably knocked out and then Dr. Sykes killed him. But Mr. Asin didn't die in the fall. He probably lost consciousness for a while, but when he came around, he got to his feet to climb out of the cage. <gasps> Just as Dr. Sykes appeared. <clears throat> If the victim was in fact alive at the point in time, it changes everything. Holy shit. Ah. Ah. Mr. Oldie Asin's killer wasn't the defender Professor Albert Harebrain, nor was it the mastermind behind the stage trickery, Mr. Arnold Shepper. It was you, Dr. Courtney Size. Grrr. Order, order, order! Can't, can't this possibly be true? Have you been taking me for a fool? It was you, wasn't you killed him? Holy shit! You hoped that by admitting to being an accomplice in Mr. Jepper's scheme, the trial would end before he accused of a far worse crime. Cold-blooded murder. Oh, do shut up. You're so desperate now you're making all this up as if I would do something like that. I assure you, the defense is not desperate, Doctor. Mr. Naruto has established the facts using evidence and logic alone. Ha! Huh. Logic? Don't make me laugh. Sadly, your logic has a gaping hole in it. What? What do you mean? I'd have thought it was obvious. A motive, boy. You're lacking a motive. What possible reason would I have to kill Mr. Asman? Asman was involved in many number of criminal activities, from coercion to death to murder. But there's no known connection to Dr. Sykes there. Hmm, I'm rather relieved to say it does seem somewhat far-fetched. True, there's no obvious motive, but there's still something in the back of my mind. I feel sure I've seen somewhere that hints at why the coroner might have done this. You mean like in the coroner's room? Yes, I might have tampered the crime scene and concocted a fake report, but murdering someone for no reason is a very different story. The... the scalpels? How you ordered a, a tremendous amount of scalpels. No, when you question what, po what possible reason you could have for wanting to kill Mr. Asman, something did come to mind. The scalpels? What? What was the cause of enlightened the court at once? Okay, deep breaths, Naruhodo. Yes, we saw it yesterday, didn't we? Something that seems strange, but I had no reason to suspect it at the time. The scalpels! This particular object that explains why Dr. Sai sort of wanted to kill Mr. Asin. Scalpels. She ordered like a bunch of it. A scalpel. A redder. Scalpels. Did you say scalpels? That. It would appear that word is stuck a cord, Doctor. You. Come on out with it. It was yesterday when you visited your li laboratory. Look at the big. Thick book here. Ah, uh, it appears to be accounting ledgers, the record of the forensic investigation team spending, I think. They're buying 500 scalpels every month. Like, why would you need 500? Yeah, that was like freaking weird to me. 500 scalpels a month? At first, I wonder what on earth you could be using that many scalpels for. 
But actually, I realize now it's not the scalpels themselves that are significant, it's the money for them, disappearing every month from the department's accounts. As this criminal organizations relied heavily on extortion for its funding, tracing the money from the forensic investigation team's account to find where it's going. Would be extremely straightforward. Uh, uh. Ten years ago, Mr. Asim was still a journalist and wrote this article about Mr. Jabber. He may well have stumbled upon information as he was uh, he, he, uh, whoops, researching the story. As he was researching the story, information relating to Dr. Sy's darkest secret that he would use to rack money from her for the next decade. Her darkest secret? Good lord, do you mean? I don't know what happened the night of that execution 10 years ago, but clearly the opportunity to rid yourself of that menace was too tempting to pass up. So in the end, so in the end, you and Chris Horace said all, were you? You did it entire of your own free will. You stabbed Mr. Asin in the heart with all your might. To silence the black man who knew your dark seeker forever. You'll never understand, none of you. What we've had to keep covered up all these long years. Uncle Two Souls is gone. She's like, okay, bye, y'all. <laughs> As very little of the machine remains after it's ripped apart by the bomb, the truth of this case can never be properly established unless you speak out. And if you decide not to, it's very possible that Courtney Sykes will escape punishment for her crimes. Please, sir, own up to what you've done and tell the court the truth about what happened. Ten years ago, you told the truth, and you robbed that the bright and successful future as a result. I can certainly understand your bitterness and in consideration now, however. This is surely the chance you've been waiting for, to sever the hold that face had over you all these years. Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, I mean, really. It's the auto blade mock scientists that are the worst, you know. They don't recognize the fact that they don't have talent, they can't even get that right. And so they end up chasing impossible dreams, having unbridled faith in their abilities. They go on and on about their wonderful hypothesis, their stupid eyes shining like a little child's. They make me sick. I can't abide their foolishness. Careful, Mr. Jarber. I was particularly pleased with the Kinesis machine. It made for quite a show, didn't it? So you admit it? You admit it was nothing more than a sham made for the purpose of killing the victim. Yes, I admit it. I did it all in the name of revenge. Revenge for the future that Mr. Ass's article had deprived you of 10 years earlier. But the revenge you saw didn't stop at Asin, did it? Which is where that particular rockstar comes in. Yes, I see. The condemned convict that you saw rising from the grave in Lowgate Cemetery 10 years ago, if her account of those events was all true, then obviously Scott Yard couldn't afford to acknowledge what had happened. Even if it meant discrediting a bright young man and crushing any future career he might have had. So your plan acquired that you abduct that particular waxwork model in order to exact your revenge at Scott Yard as well, or on Dr. Sykes to be precise. It was a year ago, by some sorry twist of fate as in turned up at my workshop. He didn't remember who I was, of course. He just wanted to employ my services as an engineer. And he happened to have a paper with him. An article on the front page caught my eye about the coroner who handled that bogus autopsy being appointed head of a new forensic team. When I learned that news, my cognitive processes started to devise the plan. What a hard tale. He robbed me of my future, so I want to use that man's own wiles against him for revenge. 
and have the rotten scone you're eating out of my hand at the same time. I wanted them all to suffer the same humiliation I've had to suffer. Your actions against those who ruined your future were justified as revenge, at least to yourself. Certainly, no one has the right to destroy another prospects, especially for purely selfish gain. And yet, in carrying out your plan, you did exactly that to someone else, didn't you? To Hairbrain. Did I? Professor Hairbrain's only crime was passion for his hypothesis, but he had no compunction about sacrificing his future to exact your revenge. You knew that he would be forever branded a failure and a fraud. Perhaps life treated you unfairly 10 years ago, and other misconduct left your life in tatters. But remember this. Your own actions resulted in exactly the same thing for another perfectly innocent young man. I... I... Or rising, sort of Dr. Size. An immediate warrant for arrest has been granted, and she's being she's been remanded in custody, my lord. I presume she will face trial in the coming days along with Mr. Trevor. A most regrettable situation indeed. She's made great contributions to her profession over the years. It really is a hard truth to swallow. However, that is the topic for some future occasion. For now, Professor Hairbrain. Oh um, yes. It seems there's a great deal more to your experiment than you realize. However, I do can assume now that all the sordid details have been brought to light. This has been a very long and profound trial, but I'm pleased to say you're absolved of all guilt. This whole experience taught me a very great but painful lesson. I, I, I've been, I mean me, this dedicated scientist, this, this devoted to natural philosophy. I've been selfish and self-centered and above all, a fool. Professor. I spent my life thinking of nothing but my research. Miss Gotti believed that I could do whatever I set my mind to despite my lack of talent. And the worst of it is, in the process, I caused others pain and misery. Others who are far, far greater people than I. No, Professor, that's not true. What? Don't tar yourself with the same brush as Jepper. What happened was his doing and his alone. This outcome is his fate, not yours. You're not to blame in any way. Lord Van Siegs, and the derision with which he referred to you earlier, calling you a fool, talentless even. The man has no idea. To believe in yourself or work your fingers to the bone to realize your dreams, that's laudable, not laughable. No one has the right to deride another for such choices. Oh. Thank you, Bart. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, yes, my lord, it is this court's ex expectation that you find the defendant not guilty of the charge of which he stands accused. I presume there are no exceptions. Not for me, lord. I the most born juror. Certainly not. This trial has really made me think, but this is the right decision. A proper proof of my daughter queen with God's glory. I'm not going to give me God forever. Huh? What's that? He, he's done it easy? Is it all over? I don't know what's because you are these days. I don't recognize the place back in my day. Very well. In that case, I hereby pronounce the defendant not guilty! Finally! Court is adjourned. It's over. That was some trial. Yeah, I'm very tired. <laughs> Just for that one trial. Professor, what a splendid outcome, isn't it? 
Oh, it is. It is. Congratulations, Professor Harebrain. Mrs. Narhoto, Mrs. Sato, I am truly, truly... Besides myself with gratitude, I can never thank you enough. I'm just glad it's all been cleared up. That you realize you were just caught up in a bad situation. Ah, uh, right now, you know, if I had the research grant money, ah, uh, I'd give the whole lot to you. Every penny. Well, that's very kind, but I'm just a student, so... We don't need any financial reward. Your acquittal is more than enough. Oh dear, oh, what can I do? Aha! What about, how about this? It's a memento. The paper of my hypothesis is inside. Well, just a memento then. Thank you. I've been wondering, Professor, what are you going to do now? Oh, oh my, yes, what am I going to do? My hypothesis is my great machine line ruins. But still, it's been too long since I was last in London, so perhaps I'll enjoy some sightseeing. I'm just swear to get you suspicion once I'm here too, and see if new inspiration hits me. Oh yes, it's a wonderful idea. I can't allow that. What? Oh, pff, okay. Look, Lord Van Zeeks, what are you doing in here? Barak! I'm sorry I had to go through that, Albert. Well, if I'm honest, it was terrifying. You were like a great demon behind your bench chair, snarling down in your prey. You're one of the few true friends I have. I couldn't leave it to anybody else to handle the prosecution or the defense. Sorry, or the defense? Did, did I just hear that right? I always knew that you had my best interests at heart, don't worry. Ah, uh, how about you show me around while, while, while I'm here in town? It's been a long while, long time since we're at the university. You have a lot to catch up on. Listen, Albert. In a few days, your acquittal will be made official. When that happens, you must head straight to Dover. I'll accompany you. What? From there, you cross the channel and make your way back to Germany. I've already purchased the tickets. But, but no, hold on a minute, Barak. What about the Great Exhibition? There's a chance of a- No, no sightseeing, Albert. Give up on the idea. Uh, it's sometimes hard to see any warmth in those eyes, Barak. Um, Orphan Zeke's? What's all this about? Unnecessary precaution. Yes, I- I think I understand. You do? Well, Iris told me that when he met Lord Vasix at his office some days ago, he asked how Mr. Natsu was doing. Yes, that's right. I remember being surprised at the time. I think it was nice of him to ask. The point is, Mr. Natsu is still alive and well, even though it's been more than six months now since he stood trial with the Reaper as prosecutor. Ah, you, you mean the Reaper's influence is stretched overseas? Those in the Reaper sites meet their end days, sometimes, or months after their acquittal. That's been the pattern up to now. But of course, we know that both Mr. Natsu and Gina were completely innocent. True. And perhaps that governs the Reaper's actions. They're truly innocent or spared. Spared, but I don't want to take any chances of close personal friend. But, but, Barog. Like the mustache, Nipponese, this man should leave the country without delay. That's why I'm packing off to Germany at once. Er, right. Does your friendship package get any say in it? Goodness, was this your attention all along, then, Gorvazix? In court, where people think of as the Reaper, this man seems absolutely merciless, and yet, sometimes I feel as though I don't understand at all. It's time to go, Albert. Back to the prison for the time being. Ah, uh, yes. Alright. Well done, Mr. Narhoto. Thank you so much for everything. Not at all, Professor. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Best wishes, Professor Harebrain. Well, what's this is settled? You must come and visit me in Germany. Anyway, goodbye for now. Alright, bye. Now, my Nipponese friend. Oh, yes, I thought- Oh, brah. Whoops. Uh, I thought you were gone too. We have matters to discuss. Can you spare me some time? You want to talk with me? I'll be waiting in the courtroom in 10 minutes. Okay. Well, that was strange. For some reason, I didn't get the sense of impending doom as he walked away this time. Alright, let's, let's talk with Van Zeeks. 
The Enigma, Barak Van Seeks. What does he want to discuss, I wonder? The answer waits in quorum, I suppose. Here we go. And... So, are you satisfied? You say the girl is scientists for a great injustice. Um, yes, I think so. I believe, at least, that the man's innocence could be proven. Anyway, I imagine you've been wondering where my animosity towards the Nipponese comes from. You know, is it kind of ironic that Kasuma is working with you, even though you don't like Japanese people? <laughs> Well, at first I thought uh, I thought you just didn't like me. I imagine you saw me as a pretentious child from an unimportant land who had no business being here. But now, I think differently. You clearly know our ways, so I would guess that some specific incident led to your thorough dislike of my race. Will you tell me what happened, please? The Professor. I thought I'd never hear that name in this courtroom again, to be honest. He- he took your brother's life. Clint. My brother's Clint Van Zeeks. Sixteen years ago, when I was still just in my teens, he was already director of prosecutions and a key member of the judiciary. I looked up to him. He was everything I aspired to be. He was involved in the establishment of justice systems in foreign countries as well. There were exchange programs between Britain and other nations then, too, to share knowledge and ideas. I was part of one of those programs. Three judicial students came to Britain from your homeland, the Empire of Japan. Oh, if it was 16 years ago then, one of them could have been my father. Of course, I remember Dr. Mikotoba well. I had no idea. I was a minor at the time, training at the prosecutor's office. One day, Clint introduced me to the three visiting Nipponese. So, you've actually met my father. He and his colleagues were polite and amicable. They were adept at the work and exacting their standards. It was my first encounter with the Nipponese spirit, and it made a very great uh, um, impression upon me. But six years later, that's when it happened. The investigation was going nowhere. There were no suspects even, just an ever-growing list of victims. And in the end, my brother became one of them. The last, in fact, before this case was finally resolved. I'm so sorry, Lord Van Zeeks, truly. Clint was always ready to put his life on the line for justice anyway, so he wouldn't have wanted it any other way. He lost his life to a killer, but it was his victory in the end. For me personally, though, it was a great loss. I found myself in a very dark place indeed. When I finally found out the killer's identity, the reason why no one had been able to catch the man sooner ceased to be such a mystery. He'd been hiding in plain sight all the time. In plain sight? Are you aware of political events 10 years ago? It was a period of extremely sensitive diplomacy between the British and Japanese empires. A new treaty was being forged, I think? Correct. The Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation is being concluded. The leaders of both countries are deep in extensive political discussions. Which is why this particular killer's appearance in court was conducted as a closed trial. If the British public had known the identity of the killer, not only would the treaty have been in jeopardy, but our two nations could very well have ended up in war. What? What? A, a war between Britain and Japan? But that all mean- oh my, you mean to say the professor was... Japanese. One of the visiting three students. The reached its conclusion earlier, I thought to myself, yes, it's time. Time for you to come face to face with this hideous monster. I borrowed the key for the mask from the proprietress of the Waxwork Museum. So see for yourselves now. Confirm it with your own eyes. The truth that's been hidden this past decade. The, that's the professor? Yes, it's him. 
Until now, the thought never even crossed my mind. That the mass murderer whose crimes shook Britain as never before was Japanese. Wait, wait a minute. That face. I feel as though I've seen it somewhere. It's strangely familiar. Best friend, Kazuma Asogi. After a whole year, finally his memories returned. As he stood there before me. Assistant Mikotoba. It's been a very long road. Thank you. Thank you for guiding my friend here when I could not. It, it was an honor. I knew you wouldn't die that easily, Cosmo. Yay! <laughs> I owe you thanks, too, for taking good care of that in my absence. Oh. Karuma, great blade of the Asogi clan, passed down through the generations. When we left Japan, this sword was at my friend's side. A Japanese man's katana is his soul, and he couldn't be parted from it. But then, when the incident happened, it was Susato-san's wish that I inherit the sword, and I've kept it with me ever since, along with my memories of the friendship we shared. this by my side. I always felt that you were watching over me somehow. Fruity. I've made it. At last. Father. Are you saying... Surely not. You mean... You knew all this time. I'm looking at it. But... I still can't believe it. This mass murderer... Is Kazuma's father.
Ryunosuke. We have much to talk about. But now is not the time. I'll be seeing you. That's all Kazuma said. Before he turned and left us there, in the courtroom. All right, back, <laughs> back, back to me reading it. Oh, I know, I know. Y'all wanted the voice acting to continue. I was just watching the cutscene, like, <gasps> like with my mouth open, like an idiot. But yeah, so he's the living after image of the man who took my brother's life. Is he? Yeah, I just did autoplay because I figured <laughs> it was just gonna like um, uh, they're just gonna keep voice acting. So. I had an inkling there was something there, some connection. But why did Lord Star do that? Why did he make Kazuma Lord of Fantasy's apprentice? And when he was suffering amnesia too. You know, he should be sending uh, a person that has amnesia to the hospital, not, not a job at the prosecution office. The man was apprehended, even executed. But his legacy just won't die, that's the sad truth. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I thank you for meeting with me as I asked. Alright, bye. That was- that cutscene was a lot. Like, a lot. <laughs> a lot to unpack. Ten years ago, my grandmother took me to a railway station. We were there to meet my father from the train, for me. It was the first time I'd ever seen him. Poor Susano's son, all just tied up with painful memories for her too. She's never talked about this with me before though. It took time to adjust to having father around, but just when I was starting to get used to it, he called me into the study one day. He told me that a great friend of his had passed away in London, and that the friend had left behind a son. A boy, seven years my senior. Father told me the boy had made a promise to late father, so he's studying to become a defense lawyer. I wanted to help, so I said to become a qualified judicial assistant. As I'm sure it worked out, that young man's name was Kazuma Asogi. So you see, that's how he and I met. For a brief moment, For a brief moment my, my great friend had returned, returned, only to disappear only again. To disappear oh, whoops. Again all too soon. But in that fleeting encounter, something stirred. Something that had been dormant for a long time. As if great wheels had been set in motion. The like fruity feeling. Creaking into life. In some ways, it was the end of a chapter. But in many, it was the start of a new one. And I actually like the third chapter. Okay, the first case is still pretty not good, but the third case, the third case is pretty good as well. Also, can I mention how <laughs> the moment between Kazuma and Ryosuke was so fruity? Yes, I will give back your sword, your soul back to you, Kazuma. <laughs> so, it was so fruity. Anyway. Episode 4, Twisted Karma on his last bow. Pipe in hand, Sholmes looked down at the thick rolling fog outside our window. I wonder exactly how many mysteries are out there, hidden within this bed of fog, he said. Indeed, a most bizarre incident, born of a curious advertisement. A hellhound's mad gallop through the shadows of a serial murder. An executed man's graveyard resurrection in the dead of night. And a 
commonplace killing in a small, forgotten room at the edge of town. There is, naturally, always another side to every case of which most remain ignorant. And it is that other side which compels me to the scene of the crime, Wilson. So quickly now, take your hat and let's be on our way, my dear fellow. For our adventure is not over yet. Come, the game is afoot. Eight days after that earth shattering whoops I did autoplay. Oops, oops. I'll I'll just go back to history. A customer of Ganyan's memory, we were in the foyer of one of London's most luxurious hotels, the Great Waterloo Hotel. Waterloo la 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 I don't know, I forgot the song. <laughs> Professor McCatol was due to arrive at any moment. Yes, I still got we got here in time. Oh wow, this hotel be looking pretty fancy. I've never been to one of these. Susanna said it hasn't been the same since what happened. Not that I'm surprised. The truth about Kazuma Sama's father. Do you suppose my father knew? There was actually the man's murder the professor, you mean? Oh, whoops. Oh, my dumb butterfinger's back at it again. I knew that's what she was thinking about. There's a good chance I say, I mean. They did come here to London together 16 years ago, didn't they? Yes, that's true. Come to think of it, did you say that Professor Mikotoba knew about Kazuma going missing in Hong Kong as well? That's right, but for some reason he wasn't at liberty to talk to me about it. What's going on here? This probably means he knows then. About Kazuma showing up here in London with amnesia, and then at that he's regaining his memory now. Can we talk to him about it? Because this is all so fishy. Ah, oh, there she is! Oh my god, it's the judge! Oh, father! Hello, Susato, how are you? I I'm very well, thank you. We were delighted you arrived safe and sound. Hello, Mr. Narhoda. Very kind of you to take the trouble to meet us here. Oh, no, not at all. It's my pleasure. You've heard all about <laughs> the judge! Oh, how am I gonna voice him? We've heard all about your story exploits here in London. You know, the news has crossed the seas. Uh, it, it has? I always look forward to reading the monthly reports that arrive with stations from Britain. Oh, uh, I see. Well, um, thank you very much. Who's this man? Why do I feel so seen him before? He's the judge, dude. Hmm, I take it for expression that he can't quite place me. In that case, how about a reminder, Seishiro? A firearm tab should do it. And we seem to sound the same for some reason, Seishiro. Hmm, that does seem to be the case, Bogotoba. Yes. Uh, a front tap? What? Here we go, then. <laughs> you just bring her big ass hammer everywhere? I hereby pronounce the defendant, Rinusuk Narahodo. Guilty! Uh, uh, oh, you're, you're the judge! Gee, Goku, Goku? I don't know, it's kind of weird seeing him without a hat. He has a nice beard. I've said this before, but I gotta say it again. He has a nice beard. Y your your Excellency. Hello, Judge Shi Goku. How are you, Goku? It's been a long time. Ha 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 ha. Good, you remember now. That really did the trick. Guilty. Oh ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Well, only I was declared not guilty, was I? And there's no laughing at the time. So, London again after, after all this time. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. To be honest, I never thought I'd be back. Neither did I. I didn't imagine Japan would ever be invited to an international symposium like this. Though, really, I doubt anyone did, to be honest. It's all thanks to you, isn't it, Seishiro? What are you talking about, Eugene? Ha ha ha. Yes, I'm gonna make these two people sound the same. No one can stop me. Of course, Judge Shigoku, he must complete the set. Okay, only one person can stop me, but like, like she's not here, so <laughs> whatever. He's the other man who, 16 years ago, 
came to London with Kazuma's father, Professor Mikotoba. He's the third visiting scholar. Well, well, all those passport report checks and luggage searches of the reporter took rather, rather a long time. I must say, I'm very envious of your ministerial status. You didn't have to go through any of that, did you? Ah, I knew you are jealous. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Sorry? Ministerial status? Yes, didn't you know? Seishiro here is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. It was his personal assistance that allowed you to take Kazuma's pies here and his study tour. Guilty as charged! Ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. He's a very jolly old man. Oh, well, thank you very much. He's really every bit as important as he looks. Ah, yes, now, Narahodo. I received the telegram from Lord Stoneheart yesterday. Oh, you did? It appears that some things came to light in a trial you involved with eight days ago. About what happened ten years ago, that tragedy. Yes, um, could you tell us any more about it? Uh, covers? So, how's the watch here? Well, 50 days at sea is a long time by anyone's standards, but it wasn't as bad as when he first came 16 years ago. No, that's true. Then I truly wonder if we could be drifting in the vast ocean for the rest of our lives. This time, we followed the same route as you, so we're able to relax and enjoy the experience. Uh, so you stopped in France's beautiful capital, Paris? We did, yes. Still only for one night. And yesterday evening, we left the port of Dunkirk for Dover. Just in time for the symposium, in fact. It starts tomorrow. Ha ha ha. It's wonderful that you're invited to attend such an important international event. I'm very proud of you, father. It's thanks to Seishiro here. 16 years ago, I'm actually ingratiated himself to Prince Attorney General. I'm sure that's why he was invited. I suppose you could say I'm something of an appendage by default. Speak for yourself, Eugene. You're a close friend to the professor of forensic science at a major hospital. Yes, well, I'd better not judge all that up, really. No, there's been a lot of water on the bridge since then, but it doesn't bring it back. Kazuma's father, I suppose. The professor, the killer who took the lives of five members of the British aristocracy, was actually Kazuma's father, wasn't he? That's correct. Genshin... <laughs> Genshin Asogi. Genshin... Impact. You knew, I presume, father? Yes, he was a close friend at the time. Genshin <laughs> came to <laughs> Genshin came to Britain as a police detective, and then he found a Mondstadt. He was studying investigative techniques at Scotland Yard. I've never understood what drove the man to commit such heinous acts. It was a close trial, so the public never knew the truth, and he was executed with little ado. To this day, very few people know what really happened, even our homeland. But what about Kazuma? Did he know? Did he know the truth about his- oh, whoops, about his father? No, no, of course not. He was told his father passed from sickness. However, whoops, I suspect he may have had his doubts. Oh, why? As you know, I tried to guide Kazuma growing up as if he were my own son. Then one day, he came to my office at the university and said, I've decided I want to travel to Great Britain and study there. I don't know why I gave it that kind of voice. Do, do you think... He wanted to come here to investigate his father's death? I don't know. But when I looked into his eyes, I did know that there was no way I would be able to stop him. Something else came to light in that child the other day, actually. Oh, what? Well, having disappeared in Hong Kong and been missing for almost a year, Kazuma since turned up here in London, working as the apprentice of Lord Van Zeeks. What? What? That's news to us! So, Lord Star was telegram neglected to mention that part then. What, they didn't know? As you know, we both thought Kazuma had died on the steamship during a voyage to Great Britain in January. But he didn't die, he's alive. As you knew, didn't you, father? In actual fact, no. What I did know... Is that when your ship 
docked in Hong Kong, he mysteriously vanished. We sent a team of investigators to Hong Kong to try to assert anyone that happened, but to no avail. But he's still alive? He and here in London, you say. I never dared even to dream it. Why on earth did the young man not make contact? The government and the police have been chasing clues fruitlessly for months now. Well, it seems though you're suffering from amnesia. What? Amnesia? When we first came across him again here in London, he didn't know who either of us were. Hmm, I see. He only regained his, con uh, his memory eight days ago. This is unbelievable. Yes, it's quite miraculous. I wonder why Lord Sarah didn't let us know. I was speaking him urgently. I wonder how Kazuma's been these past few days. Would it be wrong of us to go visit him? That began 16 years ago now. It's a distant memory, really. It was Eugene here, Genshin, Asogi, and myself. We were the original three. <laughs> the first judicial scholars in Japan to travel overseas to study. Ocean voyages are not what they are today, I could tell you. 16 years ago, things were tough for their generation. Your father was an exceptionally fine medical student at UMA University at the time, you know, young lady? Yes, grandmother told me. He went to redo research at a great London hospital to study autopsy, particularly unheard of in Japan. Yes, it was an eerie place, sandwiched between the back of a prison and burial ground. Uh, no more talk of graves. Very often, there's no one willing to deal with bodies following autopsy work. So you see, autopsy blasts have been something of an unavoidable relationship with uh, grave bars in prisons. Not my cup of tea at all. Do you remember that Scottish prison governor, Kaiden, his name was? He was a good man. Yes, but then of course, in our 66th year here, everything changed with that dreadful case. When Genshin was arrested for a series of the most gruesome murders. I simply couldn't believe it. I'd known the man for years. I was a witness at the second hearing. I tried to speak in his defense, but... But you went a little too far and ended up facing charges yourself, didn't you? Well, suffice to say that after the trial, we were sent back to Japan. There was nothing more we could do to save Genshin. He was a lost cause, sadly. Damn. Damn. Alright, well, um... Thank you guys so much for watching. I think that'll be it for part 18 of The Great Ace Tourney 2 Resolve. Uh, next time, we'll, we'll, we'll still be in this fancy, dancy hotel. And then, uh... Yeah, I think we'll be... Yeah, I think we'll still be in the hotel next time. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.